Grand Theft Auto. Not just my favourite pastime as a kid growing up, but actually one of the biggest video game franchises in the industry to date. Now, with a series that's been going on for as long as this has been, there are many moments which make you just say, what the f***? So let's take a look at some of our favourites today. But I can't do this alone. I need a Bonnie to my Clyde. I need a Ballad to my gay Tony. So I got to thinking, who could fill that role? Well, none other than Scott Danger Man Tailford. You alright, mate? Alright, man. Are you sure you're up for this? I'm pretty good, but before then, have you seen this? That's my f***ing wallet, mate. That, uh, it's an absolute liability. Sticky Fingers McGee over here. Awkward. With this in mind, we're Jules and Scott for WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 biggest WTF moments in Grand Theft Auto history. Number 10. Big and Veiny. Big and Veiny represents the moment that GTA 3 fully embraced its own insanity. Taking a departure from the usual drive here, shoot that, it tasked mute maniac Claude with chasing down stolen porn. Now, I like to support my local retailers of adult material, as should you, so I found it to be my civic duty to hunt down the booty. And what a title it was that we were chasing after. Donkey Does Dallas. Absolute vintage stuff. You get 20 grand for collecting these cum catalogues and even get a stack of them in your warehouse as a reward. It was so puerile and dumb and I f***ing loved it. Number 9. GTA 4 Statue of Liberty has Hillary Clinton's face. In Grand Theft Auto 4, Rockstar turned their hand towards a new vision of New York City as they took players back to Liberty City. As expected, their city features plenty of iconic landmarks under different names and slightly altered designs. None are quite so unexpected, however, as replacing the Statue of Liberty with the Statue of Happiness. Initially, this looks like a pretty harmless change, but look closer and it reveals a controversial motivation behind the design. Hilariously, the statue's face actually bears a striking resemblance to one Hillary Clinton, and in her hand is a coffee cup. A strange choice, perhaps a comment on how your average morning lattes value just as much as Liberty itself? No, instead, this is actually a response to Hillary Clinton's investigation into the infamous hot coffee controversy from GTA San Andreas. Number 8. Killing the Hare Krishna do you remember back in GTA 1 seeing a load of pedestrians in weird colours all in a group? Well, these guys are Hare Krishnas, people of a spiritual nature who often demonstrate their faith in public in order to convert and, in their words, educate people. Isn't that nice? Now, a GTA player would see this line of people and think, hmm, I'm in a car and I'm going really fast. Should I turn away from them or mow through them like a large marge in a butter-eating contest? Well, it turns out if you do give in to your inner demons and murder several of them at once, the message Guranga appears on the screen. This is a term that Harry Krishnas use to mean happiness, which is probably not what they'd actually feel being turned into a hood ornament. This was massively criticised at the time, to which GTA responded with, OK, well, we'll just make them as bad as everyone else and turn them into a gang in the sequel. How's that? That probably didn't go down well either, I imagine. Number 7. Tom Stubbs has no shame. Before the Ballad of Gay Tony took Louise on a great train robbery, GTA 4's first DLC introduced Johnny Clevitz, may he rest in peace, as the vice president of the Lost MC in The Lost and the Damned. Johnny struggles eventually acquainting him with the politician Tom Stubbs, who he gets to know very well over the course of the story. Now, Stubbs is the first male character to feature full frontal nudity, as at the end of the cutscene for the mission politics, he is shown completely nude with his genitals uncovered. Stubbs' nudity is referenced by the man himself, as he attempts to play down any shock with a calm and collected demeanour. While this may have helped many a player get over the initial shock of seeing a politician's voxelated penis, it didn't have quite the same effect for GTA's many detractors. But hey, at least Stubbs wasn't sprinting after you with a chainsaw, unlike another of Rockstar's characters whose flailing man wand was goddamn horrifying. Number 6. The Police Station Dildo. The massive purple dildo. A staple of not just your mother's bedroom antics, there's my one per list, but also a weapon that's popped up quite a few times in video games. Yet, it was truly shocking to find one in GTA San Andreas, especially when you realise that you can find it inside a police station. Spinning away in the shower room, CJ can use this to pound ass up and down the city. Not only is this another rock star jab at the police, but it's also one of the weirder weapons and will always put a smile on players' faces as they dill do all manner of bad to NPC butts. Number 5. Big Smoke and Ryder's Betrayal One of the most heartbreaking video game betrayals of all time simply has to be that of CJ at the hands of Big Smoke and Ryder in San Andreas. To recap, CJ is exiled to the country, having witnessed his former friends ally themselves with the crooked cop Officer Tenpenny and a rival gang. This represented a fantastic twist as it was also a moment of genuine horrifying shock. Why? 
because these were our boys. It would be like Jules telling me he was buggering off to watch Mojo. Playful rivalry intended for the love of God and take it seriously. Never before can I remember being so motivated to work through the remainder of a game and grant CJ his richly deserved revenge. And yet, while the revenge does come in the closing stages of the game's story, the initial shock of that betrayal still rings true to this day. Anyone who tells you that their oversmokes turncoat ways is simply a liar. It was with these moments where Rockstar showed us just how effective video games can be as a storytelling medium. Number four, the infamous torture mission. In Trevor Phillips' part of the mission by the book, players are forced into committing torturous acts by an FBI agent. If that sounds fun, well, trust me, it's one of the most uncomfortable moments in gaming history, so much so that it received widespread criticism from fans and the public. While Rockstar's vision of accurately representing a world in which this type of activity has genuinely occurred is admirable, you have to wonder whether the extended sequence was really so necessary. Given that safer interview and interrogation techniques were very well employed in Rockstar's L.A. Noir, the torture mission feels, for lack of better words, quite shocking. Number three, the Area 69 jetpack. Boy, I'd sure love some stealth sections in my GTA. Said no one ever. Not only did you get one of them as you infiltrated a high-end Vinewood mansion earlier in San Andreas, but there's another far deeper into the game that's already head-scratching enough and then culminates in the acquisition of a jetpack. Quite the divisive inclusion, this either represents the moment Rockstar and GTA jumped the shark, or it's one of the coolest and most unexpectedly awesome rewards in gaming history. I'm totally with the latter, but man, if the moment where you stumble upon Truth's secret project being a frickin' jetpack wasn't the embodiment of what the f***. Number two, Trevor gets brain on his boot. When Rockstar introduced Johnny as the leather-clad biker lead of GTA 4's The Lost and the Damned, it was yet another person in a line of strong protagonists. As Vice President of The Lost MC, Johnny's struggle for and against power was a truly intriguing story and it made for a great campaign DLC. Thus, it was a surprise to see him in GTA 5 and an even greater shock to see Trevor viciously kill him. The scene is shocking on so many levels, dealing with drug abuse, adultery and violence, and basically informed the players that Trevor was going to be this lit match to the tinderbox of this franchise. While the brutal method of death wasn't entirely shocking for a GTA game, the fact that a former protagonist could be so swiftly dispatched raised real questions as to who in the GTA world was truly safe. Rockstar proved that anybody could be killed, and it kept you on edge throughout the game's entire narrative. Number one, scouting the port literally being Dock Worker Simulator 2013. Forget supply lines and forget Demolition Man, this is one of the worst ideas Rockstar have ever had. Literally, just asking you to do a stint as a dock worker, mission highlights include moving crates, climbing ladders, driving a forklift, putting those crates back down again. I mean, maybe, maybe it was Rockstar's existential comment on the working class, forever doing the same boring binary tasks and wishing, hoping for the sweet release of a six-star wanted level crime spree, but that still means it was designed to be turgidly boring. And that's our list. Got any other GTA WTF moments that we forgot? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. Then swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules. I'll do my own yeah. thing because you're miles away from me right now. He's been Scott. And we'll speak to you soon. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below. And if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. Might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be.